Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to go over a basic SAT deployment process. Um, securing data is an important organizational priority. However, when you have a lot of workspaces and a lot of environments, this can be very tedious. The two questions that customers often ask is, how do I know if I'm following uh, security best practices? And how can I easily monitor the security health of all my account workspaces over time in a central uh, location? So the, the deployment process itself involves two steps. Um, in the first pass, um, somebody with admin privileges comes up and sets up the credentials so that um, all the workspace connections can be um, checked. In the second phase, uh, on a periodic basis, there's a workflow that can either be run um, via jobs or um, it can run um, via manual trigger in which the REST APIs are called and all the necessary details around workspaces and clusters and uh, jobs are persisted into Delta tables. And a Databricks um, SQL dashboard is going to help you uh, select one of the workspaces that is being monitored and get all its relevant details. Uh, this is going to tell you what checks were done, what passed and what didn't, and offer recommendations on best practices. And if there are certain important thresholds that are violated, then alerts can be sent to a configured email as well. This is what it's going to look like. Now, before we get set up, uh, there are certain um, information that we need to gather. First, as we mentioned, typically it's an admin persona who um, is needed to set this up because it requires account level credentials and workspace access. Uh, this is the Git repo. Um, and inside the repo, um, there is a docs folder, which is going to hold the, uh, the setup uh, document. It is going to help you um, go step by step to collect all the prerequisites to set it up. Uh, there's a section for uh, troubleshooting and also a section for the advanced uh, power user. Um, uh, regarding the account details, there's going to be the Databricks um, account ID, an admin email and password. Um, and then of all the workspaces that are being monitored, you can choose one to be the primary deployment workspace and the tool needs to be deployed just once in any one of those workspaces. Um, you get the URL of the workspace. It will be followed by a cloud.databricks.com. Uh, should ensure that repos is enabled. Now this is necessary so that the SAT Git repo that we were looking at earlier can be accessed. Uh, PyPy is needed so that um, um, the SAT utility library can be deployed in that workspace. Um, and then uh, Databricks CLI, if you already have it, great. If not, um, follow the instructions to download it. Uh, if you have it and you just say Databricks, it should get a, a screen like this with all the details, which means that it has it is uh, installed and available. Now for this primary uh, workspace in which the tool is going to be deployed, you should create a profile name and configure it with a back token. Um, and then the uh, you would need a small job cluster to run the notebooks, um, a small uh, SQL warehouse to host the dashboard, and an email so that critical thresholds uh, violations can be uh, sent across to you. Uh, in terms of setup steps, um, access the accounts.cloud.databricks.com using the credentials that you have. Ensure that they are right and you're able to get it. Otherwise, you'll spend a lot of time uh, debugging unnecessarily. And then uh, in that primary deployment uh, workspace URL that you have, note what is the workspace ID. Uh, so for instance, if this is the URL of the workspace, uh, the minute you click on it, you're going to get O is equal to some number that essentially is your workspace ID. Each workspace has a unique ID, so jot down what is yours. Uh, set up the CLI profile for this workspace and um, check its access, do an LS or something to make sure that you are able to access it. The next set of steps is setting up the secret scope because the uh, user uh, email and password are sensitive information. So you should protect it behind a secret. So secrets have got scopes. So set up a scope and in that scope, set up the uh, email and password that you had uh, gathered earlier. Now you would also need access to the packed token, um, but the way the packed token is set up is going to be prefixed with an SAT underscore token followed by the workspace ID number that we gleamed earlier because the code is going to look for it in that space. Uh, clone the repos, start up the job cluster. Here, make sure that you are having a job cluster with at least 11.2 DBR or higher. You can use i3x large uh, nodes and then start up the SQL warehouse as well. Um, 
there is um, um, a small JSON um, dictionary which requires these three details that we are going to look at and then start up the initializer. These are all one time. So first, let's go to repos. Let's say add a repo, go to the Databricks Industry Solutions Security Analysis tool. Um, by default, this will be the repository name. If you wish to override it with something else, you should be able to do so. Um, and then once you have it, then uh, go to notebooks, uh, go to utils, and there is an initialize notebook right here. This is where you're going to add your details around the Databricks account ID, the SQL warehouse ID, um, and the email where alerts are going to be received. Uh, once that's set up, then go to the initializer, um, attach it to the um, cluster, the data engineering cluster that you had, and then say run all. This is going to take about um, four or five minutes. It's going to run all these uh, six steps, and um, that's the one time. Uh, initial setup that was needed. Um, after that, go to the driver and do exactly the same steps. Attach it to a cluster and do run all right from here. Now, depending on the number of workspaces that you have, this can take a variable amount of time, typically eight to 10 minutes uh, per workspace or so. Um, and once this is done, then you can go over to the uh, Databricks SQL side of the house and choose one of the notebooks, uh, one of the workspaces that you're monitoring and say, apply changes. It's going to take a little bit of time uh, and restart to refresh all the widgets and should look something like this. There's a summary section. Um, there's some information around usage. And then for each of the security categories, it's going to give you the check, the check name, the severity. These are static information. Now this is the one which is more dynamic. Uh, did it, uh, pass or did it uh, fail the check? Uh, when was the last time it was run? And additional details, but these are hyperlinks that uh, give you recommendations and best practices on how to set it up and why it is necessary. Um, again, if we look at it, this was the initialized notebook where we gave in all the account details, and this was the initializer. This is done one time, and this is the daily SAT workflow where the analysis driver is run over and over again, uh, after which you should be able to look at the dashboard. Um, and that's the end of the uh, primer on how to get your SAT deployment up and going. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to help. Thank you.